Welcome back everybody. Today we're here to talk about the Richter S9. Now, a lot of the scooters we've covered in the past, as for the Karoma or the Atomi, mostly budget scooters. This one is hitting a little higher than that sweet spot. So this one comes in at about $7.99. So let's get into it, let's take a peek, let's see if it's worth that extra premium. Well, first thing I will say, this is the first one I've seen that is double boxed. There is a box within a box. So they are making sure this thing gets to you safe and sound. Whew, okay, so again, I hate to harp on the small stuff, but man, it really changes the unboxing experience when you gotta struggle to get it out because the neck isn't somehow pre-attached or held down. So on that note for unboxing, we still gotta give it to Karoma. I love the way they put that strap around, even just the disposable strap, that was a nice touch. But for now, Richter's uh, packing, top tier. Top tier packing, this thing is not gonna sustain any damage coming to your door. Okay, so it looks like we have a pretty similar attachment here to the last few. You have the neck that goes in, and you have four bolts that go in here. Actually, they have six. Right here in the included bag, you have two keys to the scooter. In the box, you have an Allen wrench, as well as what appears to be M8 threaded bolts. Nice touch. Got a user manual here. So, overall, first impressions, it's a good looking scooter. Disclaimer, if you guys don't work on scooters all the time, I highly suggest you use the included tool to put these in. I'm gonna use this guy because I work on scooters every day. Now, just to start out, most people might think, six bolts, okay, we put in six bolts, not a big deal, but it is. That is awesome. A lot of different companies, now I don't have issues with these kind of scooters, but the scooters I work on every single day, they're called Bird Ones. They only have four bolts, two in the front, two in the back, and those, those become a nightmare over long term. So, having these extra two in here is really going to strengthen up this handlebar setup. Also, nice little touch. There is Loctite already on the bolts. I think a lot of them include that. I don't normally point it out, but I probably should. Okay, so starting up here at the front. Okay, so this right here is the latching mechanism. As you can see, it's a double latch. As it goes up, that's gonna clip in. It's gonna save you a lot of hassle, so you don't gotta worry about holding it until you do the final latch. Final latch, bring it up. This one clicks in super nice. So when I say it's super nice, what I mean is I didn't have to force this one in. A lot of the other scooters, the lower ones, lower the budget ones, right? <laughs> you gotta use sometimes two hands to lock those. This one, that's nice. And it's all metal in there, so it's gonna be a little bit more solid and reliable long term. I guess in the end I'm pointing this out because we obviously wanna justify the price. You know, when you have three and $350 scooters, you wanna know what makes this one cost more. Okay, so that brings us to the next point, the suspension on this thing. You have dual shock suspension in the front and dual shock suspension in the rear. Coming to the tires, really nice disc brace setup here. 10 inch pneumatic air filled tires. All right, so right here you can see dual shock suspension again. It looks like it's mounted really nicely. Solid metal, not a lot to worry about there. You have a brake line in the back, reflector on right and left side. Now if we come around to this side, you can see right here, another large disc brake. This is not something a lot of companies do. You also have blinkers here and here on both sides. All right, now let's talk about the keys for a second. Obvious reason one might have a key. Well, turn it on, right? But here's another nice nicety you get, usually when you're going with some higher end scooters. Ease of repair and swappable batteries. So looking down here, you have a smart latch. That means it makes it nice and easy to pull it out. Hold this, boom, out. Nice strap here on top to pull the battery out. This battery is by far the easiest and smoothest battery I've ever seen. So if you had more than one battery, I'll throw the price up on the screen here for these extra batteries, but that is a nice touch. All right, just a quick edit. While I was editing the video, I was talking about the battery. Obviously it's one of their selling points, hot swappable battery. Problem is I can't find them. So I don't know the prices. I don't know if they're hard to get a hold of at the moment. So I'm gonna reach out to Richter. But for now, I can't find these batteries. I will make sure to go ahead and update the comment section in the description down below once I find the answer here shortly. Very smooth, very easy, great access. Also, this battery pack is IPX5 water resistant. All right, so now that we've seen pretty much the entire lower half, 
Let's take a look at the top and talk a little more about that. All right, so right here, first thing, short press wants to boot, long press to shut down. So give it the short press. So it looks pretty similar to a lot of the scooters in the past, although I will say it looks pretty crisp. You can see right here on the left side, we have blinkers, left, right. When you're using them, they show up here on the screen. That's nice to see. Over here, push and go. So this is gonna be a push off for safety. Then if we click through, we have eco mode, daily driver mode, and sport mode. Now, one thing to note, max speed on this is 40 kilometers an hour. It's about 25 miles per hour. That mode does have to be unlocked in the app. We'll get to that here in a bit. Then of course, we're here, we have our right and left brakes, full cable system. You have your accelerator here like we already showed you. This is the latching mechanism. And then right here on the left side, we have our bell. That's a really neat mechanism. I've never quite seen that one. So right here, you're gonna notice you also have front blinkers as well. Check that out. And then over here is the right one. Here are the brake lights from the back too. Nice and bright, very clear. Well, those are the blinkers and then the brake light as well. So you do have a running light while it's on. So overall, we can already see why this is a little bit higher premium on a scooter. I like the way it looks. Now, it is getting a little bit dark, but the next few days are a little rough. So we're gonna get out and get riding right now. And we're gonna go ahead and take the Awesome Leopard and do a comparison. <laughs> All right, so we've seen the test rides, but overall, first, let's talk about pros and cons, and then we'll get into should you buy this. Is this for you? Huge pro for me, this might sound small, but if you have a scooter like this, most of the time when you're traveling, you're gonna be popping it down, folding it, putting it in the vehicle, and off you go. I love how easily this clip comes apart. Like, it is so much easier than the rest, but it's still solid. This isn't gonna fall out on you while you're riding. It's a good quality one. A lot of the other companies, in order to make these strong, they make them really hard to actuate. This one, it's gotta be pretty much the easiest folding action lever I've used, period. Next up, I love the quality of the hot swappable battery area. Now, once you start getting into this price range, the eight, nine thousand dollars scooters, this becomes a little more common. We have seen this on a couple of the cheaper scooters. I believe it was the High Boy S2R Plus or Pro. Next up, I love that it has the good brakes. A lot of electric scooters, they're gonna have usually one decent brake, right? Then the back one or the front one, wherever the motor is, is going to be a motored brake. Now they work, but they're not gonna stop you how you want. I did need to adjust these ones a little bit. My back one was a little bit loose. That could have happened in shipping. It's very normal with scooter ownership. If you own a scooter and you have disc brakes like this, from time to time, you're gonna have to adjust this, just like a bicycle. Totally normal to be expected. A couple more quality of life feature things that I like. I love that they run the cables through the neck. A lot of companies don't seem to be doing that these days. <laughs> they seem to run them out or around. It just feels kind of messy to me, and even though they don't tend to snag on things, they can. So good on them for putting the extra effort in and doing that. The suspension. Now, when I first started riding this, at first I thought, okay, suspension's a little, little tight. Couldn't really feel it, but the longer I rode it, got a little bit softer, got a little bit smoother, 
and then it just kind of sunk in. It felt great. As I'm riding, these things start to take up all the shocks, all the, uh, the bumps, if you will, and they make it feel a lot better riding across grass than most of the other scooters that I've tested to this point. I do love the brake lights. I love the blinkers. I like the way they did it. But that's going to lead us into our next point. Let's get on to what we call the con section. I would say overall, the most disappointing part of this entire scooter to me, considering this is at best $800. Now it's $899, but I noticed they run a coupon sale on Amazon, knock a hundred bucks right off the top. So we're, we're not talking a budget scooter here. So in order to turn the headlight on, you just double tap the top button. Boom, it's on. <laughs> but riding at night, this thing is super hard to see. So when we took it out on the night tests, <laughs> we were riding for quite a while. A buddy of mine was riding another scooter and he had his light on and I couldn't even tell where my light was from his. Again, is this a killer thing? Is this, this the end all be all? Can you add a light? Sure. But I feel like with an $800 scooter, you shouldn't have to. So Richter, I would love to see an upgraded light on this because that one, that's the light that goes on a $200 budget scooter. That's not the light that goes on an $800 scooter. That aside, my other cons aren't quite as big. So when I ride, I usually have one foot planted here and when I'm moving, I have my other foot sitting here on the kick. I don't like the placement of this at all because my foot, I can't quite stand on the back here and I ride scooters a lot, especially with my job, you know, working for bird scooters and all that. I got used to a particular way I ride. If you don't ride like that, if you ride both feet planted here, that's never gonna bug you. So don't worry about it. That's just a, that's just a me thing. Also, I did watch a couple other reviews on this one. Just kind of curious to see what other people thought. Something that kind of threw me off. A couple other reviewers said something about this having ABS, and I saw it in a couple forums too. This is not listed on the Richter site. Richter does not say yes, our Alpha S9 has ABS because it doesn't. It's a direct cable drive. If you watch here, pull the cable, brake goes in. There's no pulsating. ABS has to pulsate. It has to have a system to tell it when your tire is slipping and whether or not it's stopping, sliding, all that stuff. All right, now, let's get to the part where we justify, is this worth $800? Now listen, if you live in a city and you drive quite a ways every day for work and you don't wanna own a car, you wanna save a lot of money, yes, this could absolutely be worth it. In eco mode, this thing's gonna get you up to 40 miles of range. Now realistically, are you gonna get that? No, but, you, but that's a pretty high range regardless. In our testing, we got just under 21 miles. That was a mixture between sport mode and the unlocked mode. Speaking of the unlocked mode, the unlocked mode is what allows it to go from 16 miles an hour up to a potential 25. Our top speed on it was 23 miles an hour, which honestly, not bad, <laughs> not bad. You'd be surprised what that extra 16 to 23 miles per hour feels like on a scooter and how much time it can actually save you. But just know this, when you're riding at those higher the sport mode, the unlocked mode, whatever, that's gonna drastically cut your battery life down. But hey, if you got a 10 mile ride to work and you got a place to plug it in at work, crank it up, send it. So overall, is this a good scooter? Yeah, no, it's a fantastic scooter. Um, the quality on it, the build quality is great. Couple little misses, you know, nothing major like the headlight and the, the placement of the, the thing. I'm not sure how much I love this part where the company's offset the hook to the side because when you lift it up, it's kind of unbalanced. It's just kind of awkward. I'm not sure if I love that, but again, that's just a preference thing. That's not a ding on Richter themselves. I do appreciate Richter for sending this over. You know, I'm sorry I had some negative things to say, but I try to stay honest here on my channel. I wanna just give people the best information they can for their money. All right, so you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is this a good scooter? Is this worth your money? Is this worth your time? Me personally, it's a very specific use case. If you wanna have a scooter that's fun, and get that extra range, this could be worth it. Are there better options? Well, it depends on the person, but there's always a better option for somebody. So on that note, thanks for checking out my quick review of the Richter Alpha S9. I'll throw an Amazon link down below. Right now they have a coupon code for $100 off, putting this at $7.99. Again, still a bit up there, but quality wise, it is a solid scooter. So on that note, if you like these kind of videos, there's gonna be plenty more to come. Make sure to like, subscribe, throw a comment down below, and we'll see you on the next one.